I was uh, branching out. That's when the cannibalism started, eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. Jeffrey Dahmer, a notorious cannibalistic murderer and rapist, is well known to anyone familiar with the most notorious serial killers or true crime. Before being sentenced to life in prison for 17 murders in 1992, Jeffrey Dahmer spent years pursuing and killing young men, primarily in the Milwaukee region. From the late 1970s through the early 1990s, he was a vicious killer who abducted, seduced, drugged, and tormented teenagers and men he invited back to his flat. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Dahmer was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on May 21, 1960, as the eldest of two sons to Joyce Annette and Lionel Herbert Dahmer. Dahmer began collecting huge insects such as dragonflies and moths and the skeletons of small animals such as chipmunks and squirrels while living with his parents in Ohio in 1968. Lionel taught his son how to preserve animal bones for amusement in the same year. Dahmer displayed an early fascination with dead animals. His obsession with dead animals may have began when he observed his father collecting animal bones from beneath the family home when he was four years old. Dahmer was strangely enthralled by the sound the bones produced and grew obsessed with them. From the beginning of his freshman year at Revere High School, Dahmer was considered an outcast. At the age of 14, he began consuming beer and hard liquor during the day. Dahmer discovered he was homosexual upon reaching adolescence, but he did not notify his parents. 18-year-old Dahmer was left alone in the family home after his parents' divorce. Alone and a habitual drinker, he was left to his own devices. In 1978, three weeks after he graduated, Dahmer committed his first murder. On June 18, Dahmer picked up a nearly 19-year-old hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks. Under the guise of drinking, Dahmer persuaded the young man to his home. Hicks, who was hitchhiking to a rock festival at Chippewa Lake Park, Ohio, volunteered to accompany Dahmer to his house in exchange for a couple beers when Dahmer was alone in the residence. The next day, Dahmer dissected the body of Hicks in his basement. He subsequently buried the corpses in his backyard in a shallow grave. Six weeks after the murder of Hicks, Dahmer's father and fiancé returned to his residence, where they found Jeffrey living alone. Oh, boy. And, uh, so you go back to work this Sunday night? That's Cousin Jeff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a bunch of satisfied people sitting around here. His father enrolled him at Ohio State University with the intent that he major in business. Dahmer's one and only year at OSU was mainly fruitless due to his chronic alcoholism during the bulk of the year. On the advice of his father, Dahmer enlisted in the United States Army in January 1979. Due to his alcoholism, Dahmer's performance deteriorated and he was subsequently expelled from the Army in March 1981. In his sexual interactions, Dahmer began frequenting bathhouses, which he subsequently described as relaxing locations, in the latter half of 1985. Then, Dahmer would meet gay males to whom he provided sleeping pills and gave them alcohol laced with sedatives. He waited till his spouse fell asleep before engaging in various sexual practices. After perhaps 12 such incidents, the administration of the bathhouses terminated Dahmer's membership, and he began to do so in hotel rooms. I started having obsessive uh, thoughts of uh, violence uh, intermingled with sex. And it just got worse and worse. Dahmer saw a newspaper article about the forthcoming burial of an 18-year-old man shortly after his bathhouse memberships were withdrawn. He devised the plan to steal the freshly buried body and bring it home. According to Dahmer, he attempted to excavate the casket from the ground, but the soil was too dense and he abandoned the plan. On September 8, 1986, Dahmer was arrested on a charge of lewd and lascivious behavior for masturbating beside the Kinnikinnick River in front of two 12-year-old boys. He initially claimed he had been urinating while unaware of the presence of witnesses, but later admitted to the crime. The allegation was amended to disorderly conduct, 
and Dahmer was sentenced to one year of probation with therapy requirements on March 10, 1987. On November 20, 1987, Jeffrey Dahmer, who was living with his grandmother in West Allis at the time, met Stephen Twomey, a 25-year-old man from Ontonagon, Michigan, at a bar and convinced him to return to the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee, where he had taken a room for the evening. According to Dahmer, he had no intention of killing Twomey, but rather wanted to drug him and lie next to him while he examined his body. The next morning, Dahmer discovered Twomey lying beneath him on the bed, his chest, crushed in, and covered in bruises. The corner of Dahmer's mouth was dripping with blood, and his hands and one forearm were severely bruised. Dahmer maintained he had no recollection of killing Twomey. Prior to 1989, no one knew that Dahmer had murdered four men, but he was being prosecuted for other offenses, including sexual exploitation, sexual assault, and child molestation. He was granted day release from prison and continued to commit murder. I don't know why. After, after the second time, it seemed like the compulsion to do it was too strong, and I, I didn't even try to stop it after that. But uh, after, before the second time, things had been building up gradually, uh, going to bookstores, going to uh, the bars, the gay bars, uh, bath clubs. When that, did, when that wasn't enough, uh, buying sleeping pills and, and using it on uh, various guys in the bath clubs, it just escalated slowly but surely. And uh, after the second time, which was uh, not planned, uh, it was out of control. It felt like it was out of control. From 1989 to 1991, Dahmer's experiments on his victims became increasingly severe. He began to perform lobotomies on his victims and occasionally poured acid into the holes he'd created, making the victim resemble a zombie. Glenda Cleveland, Dahmer's next-door neighbor, suspected something was amiss prior to police investigation. Dahmer blamed his malfunctioning freezer for the foul stench, claiming that his grandmother had given him some meat but he had forgotten to plug in the freezer to prevent the meat from spoiling. On July 22, 1991, Dahmer approached three men in a Milwaukee pub and offered each of them $100 to come home with him and pose naked for photographs. One man, Tracy Edwards, aged 32, accepted Dahmer's offer. Edwards was immediately skeptical of Dahmer because of the foul odor emanating from his apartment. Dahmer, however, pulled a knife on Edwards, chained him, and forced him to watch Exorcist 3, the film of Edwards' choosing. Edwards later told authorities that Dahmer placed his head on his chest as they watched the film and, while listening to his heartbeat, warned him, according Deseret News, that he would consume my heart at that time. He kind of laid across me, put his head across my chest at that point. What was he doing with his head? Pardon me? What did it appear to you he was doing with his head? What was he trying to do? Like he was listening to my heart, because at a point he told me he was going to eat my heart at that point. He said he was going to eat your heart? Yes, that's correct. Edwards stated that Dahmer forced him to go inside his refrigerator, where he discovered a human head. Before Dahmer could execute his fatal blow, Edwards spotted an opening. Edwards punched Dahmer at some point in the evening while he was distracted, and then fled out the front door. Handcuffed, he was discovered sprinting down the street. At 11.30 p.m. on the day of his ordeal, Tracy Edwards, Dahmer's escaped victim, hailed down two police officers on the street. He said that a man had attempted to kill him and brought police to Dahmer's residence. These officers, Robert Roth and Rolf Mueller, were hailed by Dahmer, who let them into his apartment without resistance. In search of physical evidence, one of the police searched Dahmer's nightstand for the key to the handcuffs Dahmer had placed on Edwards before Edwards escaped. Instead of a key, the officer discovered Polaroid photographs of mutilated bodies. There were almost 70 photographs in total. The officers restrained Dahmer and thoroughly searched his residence. In the end, they discovered in Dahmer's refrigerator not only a severed head, but also a human heart in a plastic bag and a set of male genitalia. In Dahmer's bedroom, they discovered five human skulls and the hammers, saws, and knives he used to torture and dismember his victims. In one of Dahmer's drawers was a complete human skeleton. In addition to this, cops discovered a 57-gallon acid vat, three torsos, and several other body parts. Boxes and boxes of body parts, evidence of what appears to be a psychopathic mass murder. 
Authorities also took out a barrel of what they think is acid. Police are reluctant to reveal exactly how many victims there might be, but knowledgeable investigators say it could be more than a half a dozen. Neighbors say the man was strange and that there was an odor coming from the apartment. However, no one suspected the accumulation of dead bodies. In a refrigerator, left as it was found, at least two heads, the severed remains of victims of the alleged murderer. The police chief, medical examiner, and district attorney joined in a public statement. At this point, all we can tell you is that it is a number of homicides, multiples. The investigation is still very dynamic. Uh, we don't know whether this individual acted uh, by himself or in consort with other individuals. Dahmer did a variety of things with the bodies of his victims. Typically, he photographed them and sexually assaulted their corpses. Reportedly, Dahmer enjoyed when the bodies were still warm and radiating heat. The majority of body parts were placed in the enormous acid vat, where they would decompose into sludge that Dahmer could easily dispose of. Dahmer would preserve additional bodily remains with formaldehyde or boil off the flesh to preserve the bones. Inside Edition reported in a 1993 interview that Jeffrey Dahmer consumed several of his victims. He claimed he preserved the body parts of his victims out of love and cannibalized them to feel closer to them. According to reports, Dahmer enjoyed eating his victims' hearts and arm muscles the most. He indicated that he had eaten the thigh muscle of this subject, but it was so tough he could hardly chew it. It made me feel like they were a permanent part of me. Dahmer voluntarily confessed to his atrocities, telling detectives, I created this horror, so it is only logical that I do everything possible to put an end to it. Some of his victims could have survived if Dahmer had been apprehended sooner. The Milwaukee police force was highly condemned for their response to a circumstance that could have saved the life of one of Dahmer's victims. Just months before Tracy Edwards escaped from Dahmer's murder house, a little child also escaped but due to the department's incompetence, he was later killed by Jeffrey. It all happened about 12.30 in the morning of May 27th. That's when Tina Spively says she and her friend saw Conrad Sintison phone stumble and fall onto State Street. They ran up to him and noticed that he was bleeding from behind and he appeared to be drugged at that time as well. That's allegedly when Jeffrey Dahmer grabbed at the boy and Tina says she confronted him. I was right up on him. I'm trying to threaten him, to, you know, let him go. Like, we're going to bust you in your stuff. Turn him loose. He don't want to be with you. Leave him alone. And then my cousin's like, just get out of it. It's none of your business. I said, but still, he needs help. I said, look at him doing like they get him some dope or something. Two young women attempted to report a naked youngster in need who was spotted running away, but police returned him to Dahmer's residence, writing off the incident as a couple's dispute. The boy was 14-year-old Conorak Synthesumphone, who was later murdered by Dahmer and discovered among the apartment's many bodies. He pled guilty at trial and was sentenced to life in prison plus 10 years on the first two offenses. Jeffrey Dahmer killed 17 men in total. Christopher Scarver, a fellow inmate, murdered Jeffrey Dahmer in the early hours of November 28, 1994. Many of Dahmer's possessions were destroyed in 1996, including his silverware and the refrigerator where the victim's head was located. His body would later be cremated.